Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul, where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts, which they earn by watching. First up, we're going to resupply this Phobian portal you saw there, and to do that we're going to relocate this supply vessel with a lot of food, water, and oxygen from the station with Durlaf and Desiski, and send it over to Phobos. So this station is around Mars, but it is in a highly elliptical orbit, and we need to get to Phobos orbit. So I selected this particular supply vessel because it's powered by an Attila thruster, which means it has a lot of Delta V to work with. And so here it goes. The Attila thruster, once again, is from KSB Interstellar. It's an augmented arc jet. Arc jets are real things. Augmented arc jets, uh, not, not so much right now, but uh, in principle, you know, in theory, it might work. Uh, functionally, what it is in the game for me right now is if we took ion engines and gave them a lot of thrust. It does have a very large nuclear reactor attached to it and also a generator. So it's a heavy module that gives us ion engine efficiency with decent amounts of thrust so it doesn't take many days to apply that delta V. So here we are docking to the Phobian portal. You can see Phobos in the background there. Very carefully, as this is all very heavy. And there we go. So they are all resupplied. Originally, I was going to have them wait until the supply vessels that are coming into Mars SOI right now from Earth. So they're just arriving, but it seemed like a tight thing. Here, we have another tourist that wants to land on the moon. And I decided that I was going to go with a glorious Soviet nuclear vessel. Uh, so we are using a nuclear engine. I was originally going to use a Timowin, but I put on the RD-0410, which is a real nuclear engine from the Soviet Union that I used for the Pair, which is a lunar transfer vehicle. But this is a lander now. Uh, don't actually do this with nuclear engines. <laughs> this would probably highly irradiate our passenger. Uh, who is Andrew T372, I believe? Uh, yes. Uh, so, yeah. That uh, well, Andrew is our victim in this case. We also wanted to supply the Lunar Gateway, and so that's a supply container at the top there. And I actually put the tank of the pair at the bottom with a Timberwind engine, another nuclear engine. Uh, so that's the hydrogen tank, that green thing. And then it's also got tiny little RCS tanks there too. But that's the pair without the capsule portion, that's just a tank there. And here we are launching with the full Vulcan rocket, that means eight boosters. And Andrew T gets it all to himself, except of course we are doing the resupply stuff as well. It is a lander, but we do need to land at our base on the moon in order to make it work out. It wasn't my intention to have it land. It, it could potentially have landed and lifted off again, but we are going to aim for the base on the moon. So here goes the Vulcan rocket. And there go the boosters. Very, very slowly. Yes. Ah, okay, there we go. All right. And it continued to orbit the core stage. Uh, we left short of orbit in order to deorbit it, as we do, and so the upper stage will handle the rest of the business. And decoupling the fairing. All right, making sure that deorbits as well. And so there's the stack, but we got sort of a residual roll from that. But anyway, we were able to transfer without any problems, and so there's a transfer burn. That was the RD-57 stage, and then we completed the burn with the pair. And unfortunately, it took too long to do all these burns. As a result, we overshot a little bit. Uh, it wasn't very accurate at all. So I needed to pull that down and do some additional adjustments. That's our stack there. Looking good with the earth in the background. And here we're going for a direct rendezvous with Lunar Gateway because it wasn't quite the right time to rendezvous with it uh, at the periap lunar periapsis. So this was the most efficient way to go. Takes some time, but there we are separating off the supply vessel so that they can dock to Lunar Gateway after having made the rendezvous. And here is the docking maneuver. 
It's a motley assembly of things, Lunar Gateway, these days. There's the approach. It's sort of interesting how haphazard it is. All completely just whatever happened to work at the time, I guess. Okay, so it is docked. I check the life support monitoring system to make sure everything is alright. And then we proceed with the landing with Andrew. And in order to get to the base, we have to do a mild inclination correction here. The base will help us refuel on the surface, that's why we want to get to it. So it will be drilling for the liquid hydrogen that we need. And really, if from the high orbit, from the Lunar Gateway orbit, it's not possible for the lander to land and lift off again without refueling. So here is an additional correction burn prior to landing, making sure that we get down from the high Lunar Gateway altitude to a tighter orbit for better planning. Unfortunately, I did not plan well enough, as it turned out, because we way overshot our landing location, and this required very awkward maneuvering. Actually, if we really hit it, no, nah, I still think we wouldn't have been able to ascend without refueling, but anyway, it was a close call, but not with us overshooting like this. So I decided to make use of the fuel that we had and sort of try and get closer. We did a very awkward maneuver, and then as we finally came in for a landing, I was thrown off by all this. That's my excuse. Uh, the honest thing is that I'm always bad at making sure things don't topple when landing on the moon or Mars, which is why it's better if I use KOS in all cases. But this time, it was just a bad plan. The problem is the RD0410 doesn't have much thrust to begin with, so the thrust weight ratio of the lander is very low. And yeah, we did not plan that descent very well. So it ricocheted, and Andrew happens to be the luckiest Kerbal that we've had, uh, because this whole ricochet thing does not end up too badly for him, as you'll soon see after many tumbles. Many, many tumbles. Finally, it somehow manages to end up upright. The RCS is doing its best, but I don't think the RCS alone was powerful enough to ensure it. It also still had momentum from the tumbling. Just enough momentum to get it upright again. So yes, Andrew was lucky there. And after topping off the propellant in the lander, well, not topping off, uh, just enough to actually get back to Lunar Gateway, I had Andrew plant a flag, and Andrew did in fact take some tumbles, and the flag reflected that. And off we go again, remembering that these nuclear engines all take a long time to get up to full thrust, so that's why we have it like that. Now, uh, this ascent is from the subsequent stream, so the, there's two streams in this video, and in this second stream, I was playing Apollo 11 audio because it was that time of year, so we were listening to Apollo in real time, and I decided to mute the audio from the stream because I don't want to talk, be talking over the Apollo 11 stuff, so apologies for that. But here, Andrew is making orbit, and we once again rendezvous with Lunar Gateway. You can see it's a pretty tight. I only put enough fuel in order to make this happen. So we've only got 149, is it there? Uh, so yeah, I did keep it fairly tight, but we were able to dock without any problems on the supply vessel that we had just brought there. And here is the final docking maneuver. It's, uh, it's an interesting contraption we've got here. In a way, it's preferable to something a little bit more standard and boring. But anyway, moving right along, I check in on Envy Silence around Venus because it is coming close to the time for Envy Silence to come back to Earth. And I wanted to plot a transfer window, and you can see the transfer there. We do seem to have enough delta V, at least for the transfer, but do we have enough for Envy Silence to capture around Earth after that? That's the question. 
After getting that into Kerbal Alarm Clock, we have some arrivals around Mars. This is a correction burn. This was the awkward uh, Lynx lander plus its habitat. We were supposed to add some RCS ports, but we didn't manage that. And so only the Lynx lander portion has control. It, uh, it is the only thing with RCS. So it's very awkward and we're using the lander's little ED1 engines in order to do some of the burns. But for this capture burn, we do use the Raptor vacuum there because we happen to get it settled, but it's often dodgy whether it has its fuel settled or not. So, but anyway, we got that done and it did capture into orbit and we'll have to see what we want to do with that. And we will. Uh, in fact, what it's going to do is rendezvous with this starship because this starship has a lot of supplies and that little Lynx lander and its habitat do not does not have as much supply. And so we want the food, water, and oxygen from this starship. This is just going to air break, hopefully. Uh, it is my first time, I think, trying to air break a starship around Mars. You'll note that these are the B9 procedural fins and not the fins that actuate in the right way. That may have thrown things off, but frankly, I don't think either me nor Kerbal Space Program know exactly what to do with the fins that actuate the way the SpaceX fins do. So uh, I, I know that other people have figured out exactly how to use them and everything, but I'm still still puzzled by it. But uh, we are definitely not in the right shape for air braking here. Fortunately, Mars has a very thin atmosphere and we're not entering at even low Earth orbit speeds. Right, so there's like 5,000 meters per second. It's a very thin atmosphere. The heat is not that bad. So even with it tumbling like this, I don't think it's necessarily the case that it would die, especially since we're not coming straight in for a landing. Uh, we do in fact capture. Uh, you can see that our apoapsis is nice and positive, though high. And we make it through the atmosphere without any problems. Well, not without any problems. We had to take a long time to stop it from spinning around, I'll tell you. Uh, that was a long chunk of the stream. But we did get to our apoapsis so that we could lift the periapsis up so we don't enter Mars's atmosphere a second time. So that kept Pekka safe in the starship he named MyLab. And with that starship captured, we did a little correction with this ship so that it could rendezvous with the MyLab starship and boost up its longevity, if you will. You can see its food, water, and oxygen is fairly low there, so we really do, do need supplies from something or another. Now, the whole docking sequence is a little bit tricky here because this only has RCS ports on that little lander, so it can't do the docking. Starship has to dock with this. So it's orienting as best it can, but most of the work was done by Starship here, which I guess was a good test of where I put the RCS ports. We, I'm not entirely sure where the RCS ports are supposed to be, actually, on Starship. But I put them where I could, where it would seem like they would be balanced, and it did a fairly good job of this docking, so considering it's 225 tons. So, yeah. All safe, Pekka and the crew of the Lynx lander craft. They're all good. And I double checked the life support monitoring. You can see all the stuff that we've got going there. Lots of stuff to monitor. But right now, we turn back to NV Silence and the burn to return back to Earth. And uh, because NV Silence consumes some of the food, water, and oxygen, I think we ended up with more Delta V than the last time we checked in. The tanks do seem to be controlling the boil off. I forget if I compensated for that somehow. They, there are radiators on there too. And of course the MLI layers, the multi-layer insulation. After that, we had a capture of the Mars return vessel, which eventually will carry Pekka back along with some others. And this involved a long ion engine burn that I did well ahead of periapsis because I didn't know exactly when it would be a good time to do it. Uh, these long burns. I probably could have calculated based on the stage time, but best to just get it done early. And so we did capture, and this will be ready to bring some Kerbals back home. Plenty of Delta V there, you see, but it is ion engine Delta V, so it's tough to apply it at the right time without driving myself crazy. Anyway, 
So this is bringing itself down to a lower orbit and the ion engines are working during time warp there. Otherwise, this would be a horrible, horrible thing to do. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.